Hey guys, really, really quick, check out my backup channel. Go to twitch.tv forward slash lore reloaded. Definitely check me out at Twitter. Go to Twitter. Twitter is so important. And don't forget to check me out at patreon.com forward slash lore reloaded before they shut down my channel. Son of a What's up, lore masters? So before I get into what is going to be my criticisms of YouTube AI, let me point out two things. First, I really need to give a shout out to Twitter user at ContributorsYT, a trusted flagger. If you're having any issues, check him out. Secondly, I found out that multiple YouTube employees are fans of my work, so if you're watching this, please know my criticisms are only of the AI. Tomorrow I'll go into how much I've loved the actual face-to-face -face customer experience. So, unless you're the YouTube Twitter team, don't worry about it. And more on the Twitter team later. Oh, and that welcome video was made by my best friend's son, the Scarved Insect. He makes some crazy good animations, so go check him out in the links below. So let's talk about YouTube, how it screwed me, my channel, and how it cost me hundreds of subscribers and tens of thousands of views, as well as actively promoting people to unsubscribe from my channel when it was terminated in error. On April 6th, that morning, I had been somewhat frustrated due to XSplit issues. It was causing problems with people watching me during live streams. So for about an hour, I was live with an XSplit representative and we were doing different live streams trying to test different settings to see if we could get the blasted thing to work. Apparently, for no reason at all, XSplit had decided I couldn't stream effectively at 1080p, and so I had to move down to 720. Within the hour of those tests, my channel was terminated, and I received an email saying it was all gone. Just all of it. Over 80 hours of work a week, gone. Now I tried not to get emotional at that time and appealed, and within under an hour of that appeal, it had been denied. Now, if I'm being honest, this wasn't the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it was a pretty low time for my life. I was crushed. I had worked years to figure out how to do YouTube effectively, and when I found a working formula and had grown a user base within six months, it had all been just removed. What struck me about all of this was the casual nature of it. A YouTube AI had identified my channel. It had decided I was a threat to YouTube and removed me. That AI didn't care about the two kids that I have that I used this income for. It didn't care about my wife. It didn't care that I had recently started a business and spent thousands of dollars on opening that business and buying equipment. It didn't care that I had to worry about where I was going to replace these funds now. It just saw something it thought was wrong and removed the channel. It was the most casual piece of malice I had ever seen. And then onto the appeal. Look, I'm, I'm really stuck because Employees will tell you that actual people review the appeals, but there's no way that someone could look at what happened to me and say, yeah, you know what? This person is trying to spam and cheat YouTube. It's just not possible. And to do it in under an hour, given how many videos YouTube talks about are uploaded every millisecond? Are you serious? Look, I'm going to link three videos, one by Anti-Tracker talking about his opinion on what happened to me, one with I Hate Everything, and one with Mumpkey Jones. All three represent my feelings on the matter very, very well, but some are not suitable for work, so be careful when it comes to that. So as I said, after the channel was taken down, I was devastated, and I was just trying to stay calm. And during that time, and again, I'll be covering this more tomorrow or the day after, but I got about 200 to 300 people individually who tweeted YouTube and me. It was amazing, and in fact, the only person not to talk about what happened was Team YouTube because apparently they were too busy helping a millionaire with the demonetization issue when the show that he was doing was two hours away, instead of helping out someone who was trying to figure out how they were going to eat. Okay, that's not completely fair. I, I love Philly D, I do. And he shouldn't have to worry about those issues, but it was very disheartening that even though so many people were pinging them, they never responded. Even as of the upload of this video, there has never been so much as an acknowledgement of what they did, nor an apology, nor an attempt to help me figure out what was going on. Now, and let's be a little bit more fair too. It may not be the policy of the Twitter team that they can help with this. They may actually want to, but are required to stay quiet. I simply don't know. But it's disheartening and it only shows how cruel not only these AI are, but the policy if that's the case. Either the people didn't give a damn about me or the policy didn't one or the other. Luckily, late Friday, the hundreds, and I'm not being hyperbolic, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it reached a thousand 
people tweeted on my behalf and got the attention of a YouTube hero. I've already mentioned his name, but Contributors YT sent out an email on my behalf. There was also people helping, including people on Brian G's Facebook page, which is a page for YouTubers, and even a developer from YouTube. But we'll get into that later. And then after all of that, on Monday at 11 a.m., I received an email stating that after review, there was nothing wrong with the account. No other messages, no other information, just an email. Even though they had repeatedly told me it was a legitimate strike previously. Again, the, the casualness of it. They gave me back my life and my passion, but while I'm sure the employee probably did care and was happy to do it, all I ever saw was this pre-created form, this, hey, welcome back, with no soul to it. And even still today, my videos only play at 360p and there are no thumbnails. I may have to re-upload all of my thumbnails, which I don't have, by the way. I'll have to remake hundreds of thumbnails and redo all the videos. Due to the stress of all this, I wasn't able to really enjoy the last three days of my life. I had a date with my wife where I tried to put it up a good front. I stayed positive online and I started making plans on what to do if YouTube kept the ban. Spent about $100 on upgrading things within the last couple of days, getting a Vimeo account working and looking at how I can make Twitch work. And now that YouTube is back, because of all the stress, I've also lost 12 pounds, and to be quite honest, this is one of the best diet plans I've ever done. I would suggest it for no one, though. And now that YouTube is back, I don't trust it. I don't trust YouTube. I've always been an advocate of YouTube, and I kind of still am, but I don't trust them. And even now, I'm looking at ways that I can diversify what I do and begin moving away so that I don't rely on the income from YouTube. And that's a shame. The YouTube employees did awesome, but because of this, because of the AI, it'll take a while before I can trust YouTube again, if I ever do. And I don't know if my wife, whom I proved I could make my passion viable, that I could make this work, that I could be an artist and make money, will ever trust this or anything that my art does again. There's too much risk for her. And that's... that's unfortunate. Am I mad? No, not really. If I had one thing to say, if there's a Google or YouTube employee actually watching this, it's that, while I get why you need bots, please, for the love of God, find a way to make this more personal and human. I got lucky. Hundreds of people, channels with over 100,000 subscribers from Star Trek, Star Wars, and the comic book community came to my defense. People in YouTube HQ knew of my channel, and a YouTube hero got in touch with me, but I'm sure that there are others that didn't have this support. And unfortunately, they probably were never even noticed. And because of that, they could no longer keep food on their kids' tables. I know that no one at YouTube wants that. But I also know that we can do better.